In today's video we're gonna compare the MacBook Air 2020 to the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 4500U. These units have some similarities but also some very big differences and uh, I have been using them quite extensively. So we're gonna go through the exterior and the performance and then make some conclusions about what the units are actually good for. I'm W2Best, I make videos about tech travel and inspiration and if you like this kind of content after watching it I would be really happy if you wanted to put a like on the video and maybe also subscribe to the channel so that you can get all the content that I'm going to be putting out in the upcoming weeks and months. I also have an Instagram account, it's at W2Best there as well and you can communicate with me there or if you prefer in the comment section below. If you want to buy any of these laptops, I will put links to where you can find them in the description below. And I will also put links to the other reviews I've made out of these laptops, because I've made quite a bit of content about them before. So have a look in the description below for all of those resources. And if you have any other questions or comments about these machines, please put them in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Before we start comparing the units side by side, I wanted to tell you what specifications I have been using. These were the cheapest models I could find of both the MacBook Air and the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7. So that is the MacBook Air with the i3 CPU, the 8GB RAM and 256GB SSD. And it is the Ryzen 4500U with 16GB of RAM and 512GB SSD in the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7. For the MacBook Air 2020, I paid roughly 1250 US dollars. That was with an open box, so it was a little bit cheaper than what you would normally expect to pay for it. For the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7, I paid 750 dollars. This was also with an open box and it is a lot cheaper than what they normally go at, at around $950. Let's get into comparing the laptops side by side. These laptops have different form factors, which you can clearly see when comparing them side by side like this. The Yoga Slim 7 is a 14 inch 16 by 9 aspect ratio device when the MacBook Air is a 13.3 inch device with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So putting the Yoga on the bottom, you see how much wider it is. And putting the MacBook Air in the bottom, you see how much it sticks out here from having this higher screen aspect ratio. The laptops are similar to the touch in terms of quality feel, and also quite similar in weight, although the Yoga is probably a little bit heavier. Which makes sense since it's also a bit bigger. The MacBook Air weighs in at 1274 grams. Together with its charger and power brick it weighs in at 1447 grams. The Yoga Slim 7 weighs in at 1350 grams. Together with its much larger 65 watt USB-C charger, it weighs in at 1670 grams. However, I was just testing and managed to get the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 working with the MacBook Air charger. So you can buy something as small as a 30 watt charger and use with it. And the Yoga Slim 7 together with the 30 watt MacBook Air charger comes in at 1523 grams. The port setup differs quite a bit between the two laptops. On the MacBook Air you have two USB-C Thunderbolt ports on the left hand side and one 3.5 mm combo jack on the right side. The Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 has two USB-C ports and one full HDMI port and a 3.5 mm headphone jack on the left hand side. Together with two full size USB-A ports and one micro SD card reader on the right hand side. So the Yoga Slim 7 is a lot better equipped when it comes to ports. The MacBook Air can easily be opened with one thumb like that and you log in by using the fingerprint reader. 
The Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 can also easily be opened with one thumb like that and it logs in using Windows Hello which is a very quick process using the webcam and sensors up top here. Both these laptops have very bright and nice colorful screens. However, the MacBook Air clearly is the winner when it comes to the screen, both because it has the 16 by 10 aspect ratio that gives a bit more space when reading documents or browsing the web, but it also has a much higher resolution display, which makes it so much clearer than to use the display that is just Full HD in the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7. Comparing the screens for media consumption side by side like this, you can see that the resolution of the MacBook Air 2020 is really nice as well as the blacks and the whites that come out really well. The screen on the Yoga Slim 7 actually look a bit washed out when you put it side by side to the MacBook Air. However, the screen of the Yoga Slim 7 is a lot bigger. It is both 14 inch and has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So the black borders on top get a lot bigger on the MacBook Air compared to the Yoga Slim 7. I didn't expect to see this much of a difference though. It is such a clear win for the display to the MacBook Air that there is not even any discussion about it. This on the side with this look more like the IdeaPad 5 screen which compared to the Yoga Slim 7 looked really washed out. So it's quite interesting to see that big of a difference. One thing I mentioned in my review of the MacBook Air that I'm really not a fan of is the bigger bezels around the screen. As you can see with the Yoga Slim 7, the bezels on the sides are really slim, the bezels on the top is really slim, and then you have a bit of a thicker chin down here. Whereas the side and top bezels on the MacBook Air are actually quite a bit bigger than comparing to the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7. This makes for a big difference in the total size of the laptop when folding it together. And it also doesn't look at all as sleek when you're using it with those larger bezels. The trackpads, I would say, are very similar in quality, but the MacBook Air clearly is the winner here because it has a much bigger trackpad and therefore is easier to use. I had a bit of a harder time to get used to the trackpad and the way it feels when you click down hard and extra hard. It kind of has two levels, but this is done electronically with haptic feedback, so it's not an actual hard click down. However, when you get used to it, it is working really well. The trackpad on the Yoga Slim 7 is good, and it's very smooth to use. It works great with gestures, but it's just that a lot smaller compared to the MacBook Air, so it's harder to recommend it because of that. The keyboard experiences are actually quite similar between the two laptops. I'm usually typing a lot of documents at work, and I would be very fast with both these keyboards. But when it comes to the typing experience, I have to give the win to the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7. It has a bit more travel distance in the keyboard and it's just a nicer keyboard experience overall that enables me to type a bit faster compared to the keys in the MacBook Air 2020. And these are the speakers of the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7. And these are the speakers of the MacBook Air 2020 on max volume.
just because my love today Oh, just because my days are pretty even though I genuinely loved the audio from the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 when I was testing it the first time, I have to give the win here to the MacBook Air 2020. The audio is just a bit more full and a bit more bassy. It doesn't distort even though the volume gets even a bit higher than the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7. Very impressive performance there. So when testing those basic features of the laptop, I think the MacBook Air actually comes out really strong against the Yoga Slim 7. The main thing though is that the strongest point of the Yoga Slim 7 is that it's got the ports, the performance and an incredibly low price for what you get. And the MacBook Air really can't come close in those regards. It hasn't got any ports at all. It's got a very mediocre performance, at least with this i3 CPU that is in this unit I have here. And also, it's got a price tag that is so much higher than the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7, and so much higher than the components you actually have in the laptop. So I just think on these major points, there's no question about it, the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 is of course the best unit. As you probably know if you're eyeing these machines, they are targeted at very different audiences. And the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 is actually a feasible main productivity machine, whereas the MacBook Air 2020 is more of a content consumption or lighter productivity machine. But still, we need to have a look at performance and compare the performance between the two so you can see just about how big the difference is. The Wi-Fi speed I got from the MacBook Air was 48.56 megabits down and 35.2 megabits up. On the Yoga Slim 7 I got 55.8 megabits down and 68 megabits up. And this was testing on the same Wi-Fi connection. When it comes to SSD speeds, on the MacBook I had 1200 megabytes per second read speed and 1000 megabytes per second write speed. The Yoga Slim 7 differs when it's plugged in to when it's run on battery power, but when plugged in I get 2885 megabytes per second read speed and 2719 megabytes per second read speed. On battery power I get 1891 megabytes read speed and 1627 megabytes write speed. In Cinebench R20, which is stress testing the CPU to its max, with the MacBook Air I received a result of 665 points. With the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 it differs a lot depending on what power mode you're using the laptop in. But when maxing it out in the power mode called Extreme Performance, you'd receive a result in Cinebench R20 between 2000 and 2500 points. So there's really not even a challenge here when it comes to the max raw power of the laptops. The Yoga Slim 7 is just so much faster. However, when you take that over to a real world example, it doesn't have to be that simple. I downloaded and ran DaVinci Resolve on both of the laptops, and I had much better experiences video editing on the MacBook Air, because DaVinci Resolve was actually running smoothly there, compared to on the Yoga Slim 7, where I quickly run into an issue that freezes the application, I have to restart it, but when I restart it and try it again, it freezes the application right away anyhow. So sometimes with some real world applications, it doesn't really matter if you have the raw performance. If the CPU is not really that compatible with the software, then you might be better off with a weaker laptop anyhow. Currently, video editing isn't the strongest point of the Ryzen CPUs, so if you want to do video editing in DaVinci Resolve, I would actually recommend to go towards an Intel CPU, and preferably with a dedicated GPU as well. One thing that can't really be ignored here either, it's kind of an elephant in the room when it comes to PC laptops and uh, Lenovo and Asus in general, and that is the quality control of these laptops. I have had two units of Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 
and the first one had a broken webcam so I had to return it. The second one which is the one we've been looking at in this video has a lot of coil wine but it's not enough of a problem for me to send the unit back because I still think it performs the stuff I want it to perform at a very good price level. This MacBook Air that I got had no quality control issues and it seems that Apple products have a bit less problem with quality control. If you decide to get the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 or any other PC laptop for that matter, please make sure to double check everything when you receive it so that you don't find out a bit too late about something that has been there from the beginning. Let's uh, wrap up this comparison. While the size and weight of the laptops are pretty similar, there are a lot of differences between them and they are mainly targeted towards different use cases. The MacBook Air is an excellent media consumption and lighter productivity laptop and I would really love to use it for only those needs but even when I have like a traveling laptop I really want to be able to have some ports so I can import some footage easily I don't like the dongle game at all so if I would get and use a MacBook Air for a longer period of time it would probably be only for streaming content and like watching content on the go because I think that's where it really excels. Also writing stuff, typing on the keyboard is an excellent experience so I think that is something the MacBook Air 2020 could do really well as well. The Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 is an excellent lightweight productivity based ultrabook. It does a lot of things really good but it is not that great when it comes to video editing. It is the Ultrabook that you can bring along, use for all your productivity tasks and play some games on as well when you're done working. So in the end it's actually really hard to say that one or the other of the laptops are better. They are so different and they are for such different use cases that you just have to figure out what your priorities are and how much money you're willing to spend to buy a machine that will fill up those priorities. I'm W2Best, I make videos about tech, travel and inspiration and I will see you in the next video. Have a really nice day, bye bye!